What's going on guys, it's Bromley from Empire Barbell and today we're gonna cover some of the nuts and bolts of programming. We're gonna talk about progressive overload, general adaptation syndrome, and the stress recovery adaptation cycle. So to start out, we'll look at general adaptation syndrome. Now this is a very blanket conceptual description of how the human body adapts to stresses imposed on it. It's not just a neat thing that we can exploit as weightlifting hobbyists to kill time in between our work and family obligations. It's actually very much a survival mechanism. It's the reason that we can continue to thrive in a very harsh and dynamic and ever-changing environment. So general adaptation syndrome basically just explains what happens when a stress is imposed upon us. It can be a physical stress, it can be a psychological stress. If any of you have taken uh, psychology classes, you've seen this demonstrated. And it's basically broken into three phases. We start with homeostasis. This is you just in your natural state. This is, I woke up like this. It's you on the couch, no extra work, no uh, outside environmental stressors acting upon you. This is just you at baseline. You go in and let's say you do your first workout. You pick up a pair of 10 pound dumbbells and you do some curls and you notice that you are immediately beat down right after that. You're sore, you're fatigued, there's structural damage. You are not in the same performance capacity that you were before you did that. And what happens is your body starts to recover. Now, this is often called supercompensation. This is the adaptive part of the cycle where your body actually recovers to a greater degree than where you started. The supercompensation takes place and you are now adapted. You are now in a better position to respond, to deal with that stress as you were when you started. Now, the three phases, alarm, resistance, and exhaustion, basically describe what happens if that stress continues uninterrupted. Now, the ultimate conclusion, if you are continuously stressed beyond your capacity to recover, is death. If you continuously exhaust yourself past the point of your body's ability to grow and to be able to handle that stress, eventually you just deplete all of your resources and you die. Our main concern with strength training or any type of physical training is this segment right here. It's where the stress causes this drop in performance. It's where we grow and then super compensate. And then we end up up here. And our goal is to take that cycle and to be able to stack them together. That's where we have to concern ourselves with the mode of training, with the timing, with the organizational structure, with taking fatigue into account so we can pace ourselves appropriately to predictably keep that cycle going. So stress recovery adaptation cycle demonstrates what goes on with general adaptation syndrome. You incur a stress, that's just the thing you do in your workout that causes a response. You take time to recover, which varies depending on how substantial the stress was, how adapted you already are. It changes wildly based on your training experience. And then that determines the level of adaptation. I actually think about this as like an exposure growth performance cycle. It essentially says the same thing, but I think a lot of people forget what stress means. When you are stressing yourself in a workout, you are exposing yourself to a certain stimulus that is designed to have a predictable result. So I run into this with people I train, where if I put them through, let's say, a volume block for six or eight weeks, and then we might aggressively jump to a different form of, uh, different mode of training, where now we're in a strength block. And if I say, start with a max five or a max three, I often get complaints if those numbers aren't immediately greater than what they did before the volume block started. I have to explain to people that the point of training isn't always just to hit a PR. It's not just to do more than you've ever done before in your life. And people can very easily fall into that path of thinking where the point of each workout is to test. The point of each workout is to demonstrate how much stronger you've got. That's not the case and you're gonna fall into a lot of pitfalls if you approach it that way. The point is to expose yourself to something that you have not recently been exposed. So I can go in and I can hit a top triple at that point of my training cycle, which actually I just did that in my own overhead pressing. I did a lot of light volume for a lot of weeks. I went in, I hit a top triple. It was not the heaviest triple I've ever hit, but it was the first heavy week and a lot of heavy weeks to come. And I know based on how my ebb and flows of training go, that I am set up very nicely to progress off of that baseline. So exposure is the key here. You're either exposing yourself to more volume or exposing yourself to a new exercise or exposing yourself to more weight than you have recently handled. There's a lot of different ways to organize that and to approach that, but that's the crux, that's the key. It's exposure 
to a stress that is going to cause an adaptation. After you recover, you grow. So the growth is what allows your performance to increase. That's representative of the adaptation. And you can then use that increased performance ability to again, expose yourself to more work. And that cycle is what continuously builds off of itself. That's represented over here in this alarm phase. You stress, recover, and then you adapt. That's what we're looking for. So tying this into progressive overload, which is like the oldest principle, it's one of Weider's foundational principles from like the 1930s or 40s. He laid these out that are still used by bodybuilders and strength athletes today. The idea of progressive overload is simply to play by the stress recovery adaptation cycle. It is to continuously expose yourself to a greater stress. Now there's some nuance there. You have to have a sustainable method. You have to know your pattern ahead of time and it has to be sustainable so that you can continuously progress in a way that allows you to really milk that cycle for all it's worth. The average trainee sees progressive overload and they hear load and they think more weight. Now adding more weight is definitely one mode of it, but it isn't the only mode and it shouldn't even be your primary mode. The end result of just going by progressive overload is just adding more weight on the bar, especially the way most trainees conceptualize training as having to be a very maximal all out effort is to hit the brick wall. So if we start off the couch and you pick up a dumbbell and you do some repetitions and then as time goes on, you add weight and every workout you do is to limit and every workout is done with as much weight as you can. You end up hitting the brick wall very fast and I think most of you have experienced the brick wall where the pattern of just trying to go as heavy as possible, as hard as possible, very quickly leads you to a point of training that is unsustainable and you read that scenario as I'm not making progress anymore. When in fact your approach to progressive overload is flawed. What happens in the stress recovery adaptation cycle is that as you adapt, you become resilient to that stimulus. That's the entire point of adaptation. So doing the same thing, the same exercises, similar volume, similar weights, it doesn't have the same impact on homeostasis, which means your body does not really have a reason to adapt. For each similar effort, you get diminished returns. You do not get the same impact, the same growth. However, recovery is still gonna be substantial, especially if stress continues to increase. So if your idea of progressive overload is that stress has to continuously go up to get an adaptive response, recovery is going to offset whatever diminished returns you get from that training stress. So as recovery drops and fatigue climbs as you increase the stress, you end up getting less and less bang for your buck. Eventually you either become stagnant or worse yet you actually regress and that's where you get very frustrated. Our goal with continued methods of training or with finding a sustainable method of training is to find continued ways to increase stress in a way that is going to continue a substantial amount of adaptation that is going to continue to grow you in a way where lack of recovery is not your limiting factor. So we can start with something like a linear progression, which is conceptually is a very simple thing to follow. You start with the same sets and reps and the same exercise. All you do is add five to 10 pounds each time and you carry that on indefinitely. When you are new, when you are a novice, when you're first starting out, as far as uh, homeostasis is concerned, you're fresh and you're sensitive to all these different training stimuli. You can train, you know, up to three days a week, every two or three days, you can repeat the same hard effort and add a little bit of weight and you'll find you continue to progress. As you get something that looks like strength, that doesn't cut the mustard. Your lack of growth from the same stress paired with the lack of recovery from all the extra work you're doing eventually leads to stagnation. So one of the easy answers is to just space workouts further and further apart. So where you might've been training every two days, now you train once a week and then eventually every other week or every three weeks. That's actually what I'm on right now. I do deadlifts every other week. It's a very linear type of pattern I'm following every second week. I try to outdo what I did last time by a set margin and I have a long enough runway where I know I can continue that for eight, 10, maybe 12 weeks if it goes well. And then that, the ultimate conclusion of that is going into something like three week waves, five, three, one is a good example of that. And then eventually block periodization where we're coming back to the heaviest weights once every 12 weeks, 16 weeks, depending on what your cycle's like. Now, just looking at the stress recovery adaptation principle as how, as the driving reason of why we structure it this way, it is a little bit incomplete because if we're only focusing on extending recovery by moving our heavy attempts further apart, then it would stand to reason that you would only be doing 
a singular heavy effort once every three weeks or once every 16 weeks in, uh, in the form of block periodization. That's actually not what we do and it actually wouldn't work if you did do that. We still have to fill up our training week with something, with some stimulus or else we would completely detrain. So this is where variability comes in. Even as you go from a three times a week LP into something that goes weekly, you move into like the Texas method where you're only having your heavy workout once a week, but you still have a lighter day, you still have a volume day. There's variability in there. Now you're training other aspects concurrently. Three week waves like five, three, one, you're working, you're ebbing and flowing across a range of percentages. So while your heaviest workout only comes once every three weeks, you still have other weeks where you are training hard in different thresholds. And block is actually the fully fleshed out realization of that principle because now we're using each block to hyper fixate on one training variable. So we start with higher reps, we get very good at that. You may progress linearly within that concrete block, but then we focus on something a little heavier. We go into a transmutation phase where now we're in sixes, fives, fours, and then eventually we go into a very heavy phase. So each block is varied and it keeps you in the first phase of this GAS cycle where you are actually getting successful super compensation. You are actually making sure that you are better after each workout and you're not just compounding the same stressor to the point of exhaustion, which is what most people do and it's why you end up hitting the brick wall way down the line. So if you're having trouble conceptualizing progressive overload of thinking what you do, just remember the point is to over time expose you to more than you have been exposed to before. That's also a very local event that you need to be thinking on. Local meaning, what have you been exposed to recently? Don't go off your all time best that you may have pulled off six months ago. It has to be within a recent time frame. So I always operate by starting a baseline when I'm starting a new cycle. I set a minimum am amount of work. It's usually something that I haven't been training in, some threshold I haven't been training in. And I remember that for a set period of time, my goal is to increase steadily in a way that is sustainable. It's known ahead of time that if I were to continue that indefinitely, it would become unsustainable, which means at some point you have to wave back. There really is no training methodology that doesn't involve some interruption of the same stress over time. No matter what it is, if it's concurrent, if it's linear, if it's block, if it's LP, it all takes into account that at some point the same stressor is not going to be sustainable. You do have to drop back or you have to have some creative workaround that allows you to spread those hard efforts out over a longer period of time. And remember your main goal is adaptation, whatever it is you're doing right now. Your goal is to see the growth and the increase in performance in a way that allows you to expose yourself to more work continuously. Adaptation is always going to exist where stress and recovery balance. There's more to increasing your stress than just doing more work, more weight, and beating yourself up over and over until you hit the brick wall. You have to find ways of continuing stress without taking that same hit to recovery. That can mean moving workouts further apart. That can mean focusing on different training thresholds that you haven't been focusing on before. And that is ultimately the crux of periodization and any form of periodization that works will work because it takes into account how stressors interact with your ability to recover from them. So I know that was all very vague. Down the road, I'm going to get into some more detailed explanations of exactly how we put this into practice, what you should be thinking about along each step of the way. But in the meantime, if you want some feedback on good training modalities, go ahead and join the forum, empire-forum.com. We have a lot of smart people there that are having daily discussions about best programming practices. Thanks for watching, guys. Till next time, this is Bromley at Empire Barbell. I'll see you.